So the uh, on the Bluetooth USB device here, what we did was um, what's interesting how the whole story starts. I was at a a uh, company meeting uh, discussing um, security within the company with Gartner, and one of the Gartner uh, vice presidents basically made the statement that Bluetooth is not a security risk because it is short a range. short range technology. So what I did was went out and purchased one of these cheap Bluetooth devices with the dongle. Uh, antenna, go ahead and scroll down. What we did was we stripped the thing open, removed the antenna jack, go on down, put an MMCX jack on there and soldered it straight into this. And from there we went ahead and put a flat panel uh, antenna up and we were able to establish a stable third of a mile connection to a uh, Blackberry box, Blackberry, as a headset. <laughs> I'm going to get the URL if I can get the, uh, read that. It's LairDefense.com. So what we've done, so right now this device is set up upstairs on the sixth floor, and we're shooting the street lengthwise at an angle out in front of this building here, uh, gathering all the Bluetooth uh, that's going up and down the street. So, And I think we've, what, several hundred, if not more, a lot from cars and vehicles going up down the street. And, That's and, they, cool. and these things are containing, some of them containing phone numbers, containing personal, their names. So is it, is it, is it automatically, um, I'm thinking, I'm thinking, loose nothing them? No, we're not actually using any, any tools other than just gathering, just sniffing standard Bluetooth information. We're not doing any kind of... What all tools do you have on it? I, I see how you modified the hardware. What all software tools do you have on there? Oh no, you're putting me on video now. Uh, oh, you want me to stop that? <laughs> okay. uh, we're using BT Scanner, uh, and it was in the default installation of Backtrack too. And that's also logging various Bluetooth communications, like phone numbers and so forth. No, it's not actually. It's not actually grabbing personal communications. It's just grabbing information on the Bluetooth. What it is is a lot of people are naming the phone number. They're naming their Bluetooth with their phone yeah. number. Oh. So yeah, they're broadcasting so the phone number. Their, their ID, their Bluetooth ID is actually, what they're doing is, like the one that we found, it was uh, it was a person's last name and it said, if you find this phone, please call. And there was a phone. Oh, okay. Including the area code. So I'm like, I call. So we're seeing a lot of personal names. Just like, like you're only a Bluetooth stack by default on like a Windows box, we use the Windows box's name as the Bluetooth name. Right. Same so kind of thing. These people went in and said, well, I'm going to set up my Bluetooth to be this message and broadcast it. So they're using their personal names, they're using phone numbers, uh, a lot of personal information. So we're trying to see what kind of data we can gather in a passive mode just by saying, pointing an antenna at a bus stop, and when people come to work and leave for work, you know, what information are they just broadcasting arbitrarily so into someone, the air? Someone, someone, could, someone could basically, theoretically, throw something like this up on several different streets or in a neighborhood and could actually track people's movements. And in some cases, yeah. identify who they are and tell when they go out of their house, when they go down the street, when they go to work, when they get home from work. All this information can be gleaned just by gathering this broadcast data in the air right. on a day-to-day -day basis is from average Bluetooth phones, headsets that they have turned on with Bluetooth enabled. Now how many devices out there, what percentage of devices nowadays would you say have Bluetooth discovery turned on by default? Well, last year we, we were actually monitoring some Bluetooth last year and we didn't hardly pick up any devices last year. Uh, so I'd say there's been a significant increase in the amount of Bluetooth devices over the last year. Now, I know when I got my Motorola Q recently, Bluetooth uh, discoverability was turned off by default. And I know you can find a non-discoverable device by like brute forcing through all the, they don't use the term MAC addresses, but basically they're like MAC addresses, the Bluetooth address. The BD address? Yes. And if you brute force through them and you try to contact that address, even if it's non-discoverable, it'll respond to it. But now I understand that's such a big space now that that's a little bit impractical to use. How many is the, I was just wondering how many devices out there have Discovery turned on by default, because I know my Motorola Q had it turned off by default. I'm not sure. At least from Sprint. I think a lot of people are turning it on because they're seeing a lot of devices that they hit sets. Yeah, they make, it makes their life easier, right, because you know, a lot of people want to drive hands-free, so they go out and buy the little, you know, ear plug and drive down. The Borg implants, gotcha. Yeah, exactly. So they're, they're going in and setting up their Bluetooth, and they don't really have a clue about what data that they're putting in there. So some of them, you know, you'll just see like the phone information will be real basic or it'll say unknown, but then you're getting more people that are putting personal information in there. So, um, you know, Daryl had said something about 
setting up a script so that you can put a camera on your, you know, hooked to your laptop so that when it sees something that's Bluetooth, have it snap a shot. So now you're taking a picture of the car or the person, whoever's got the Bluetooth. So now you're not only getting that information, you're getting a picture of that individual. So you're talking low-tech surveillance via Bluetooth. But someone was telling me this about... will be coming to a paper near you at possibly DEF CON this year, so be on the lookout for that. Yes. I, I thought Don't part... jack our stuff out there if you I, if I'm trying to know where I saw it, but I saw somebody's, <laughs> someone, on someone's website, they had a project called, uh, I think, the Car Whisperer, yeah, they where they would use a Bluetooth device to inject audio into passing cars from an overpass. That's that hard. You know, like, maybe something like, you know, swallow your soul or something like that. <laughs> was that? That was the Trifonet? Yeah, that's it. That's the web page. Trifonet.org, I believe it was. So what started as us just kind of goofing has turned into uh, actually we've been talking about this more and more all through the con. Which well, which group get name again? Um, well, this is layered defense and this is uh, Daryl's project. But then we also have Ohio Information Security, which is our uh, use group that meets in Dayton monthly, Profession, second Thursday. Professional security. Yes. Professional security group. Yeah. yeah so Keep we're that professional. <laughs> yeah, we're not. We're not. It's not a hacker group. Yeah. We're not black hats. This here. This. Here, layered defense is something I started here uh, about a year and a half ago to handle uh, security research projects. Um, probably, uh, this is just a simple one we did. I'm pretty sure I've come across your website at some point in time. Yeah, I uh, probably some of the go over to advisories. I've done um, over the last year, I've basically been working on a research advisory dealing with local um, format string exploits within enterprise managed uh, antivirus. And we basically oh, yeah, Semantics had a ton of problems yeah, over the last year or two. We, did, we, we actually were able to find format strings uh, in F-Secure, Bitdefender, Novell Client, that one's kind of funny, Trend Micro Office Scan, Semantic Antivirus, and CAZ Trust. Uh, we looked at the top ten, and we've looked at eight of them so far, or seven of them so far, and we've taken five of them down. Uh, with format strings, which is supposed to be considered not really common in the Microsoft world. Even though almost all of these were local exploits except for one, it's still the idea that a format string that shouldn't exist does exist. Uh, thanks for the conversation, guys. No worries. Got it? Not a con bathroom cam? Not a con bathroom cam. <laughs> at not a con. Someone put a webcam in the uh, bathroom here at not a con. Let's stay on that for a second. Yeah, you, you're covering your... And what's cool is it's pointing right at the stalls. <laughs> okay. Oh, sorry about that. <laughs> that's wrong on a new level of wrong. Oh man, that's wrong. Layers upon layers upon layers. For those that don't know who he just saw, have you ever heard of Meat Fed? You are officially gay! I'm officially gay! Oh, we're also recording uh, for my... Uh,